All right, guys. So this has been quite a journey. I've been out here for quite a few hours today. Um, I bought this C-Max chassis, GCM Racing. Uh, I got this last year at USTE, um, Tiny Trucks USA. It's an American distributor. And, um, yeah, I started putting the axles together. I bought the Super Narrow the 152 Yoda axles. And I was planning on just building a another Hilux or maybe using my 4Runner. And, um, yeah, I built the rear axle, and I didn't really like it. These uh, Bauhaus RC, they use, uh, what is it, Viterra Ascender discs, because they're affordable and readily available. And it's just a little big for me. And I just wasn't feeling it, so I never put the front axle together. I never messed with it again. And I've been sitting there looking at the box of parts and all these beautiful aluminum GCM goodies. And I was like, I really don't want to put 3D printed plastic on that beautiful chassis. <laughs> So, I had my Trailfinder 2 long wheelbase that's just been sitting around. I haven't done anything with it. It doesn't run. It's missing half the stuff. No body. And so I'd swap the axles on that TF2 with the uh, new cast K44s when they came out. Because they look more like an American axle. And, um, yeah, I thought maybe I'd do some kind of square body on that. And it's just been sitting. So, I got the wild hair that I'll throw those nice axles on this. Um, running these old 155... Uh, mudslingers with old school GCM uh, mini mags. They did a super narrow offset. So I thought that'd be cool. Throw it together. Got the LRT2 transfer case mated with the uh, transmission. Motor plate all that in. Beautiful chassis. And I did the rear suspension first and then I realized there was a problem with the front suspension. And it's uh yeah I wasn't thinking far enough ahead. It's been so long since I bought this. Uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I looked at the rear axle. It has the standard width as far as the leaf spring mounts. And I started swapping away. And I put the uh, K44 in the back. I got up front and all of the hardware was different. And I couldn't figure out what which way it went. All the instructions I found online from GCM showed the front setup looking just like the rear. <laughs> I'm sitting here like, mine's different. What, what's going on? And there's a reason for that. It was It's made to mount inward and move your mounts underneath the frame rail partially so you could tuck this super narrow axle in the front and it would give you plenty of room for steering still with your leaf springs brought inboard kind of like the old bruiser except the old bruiser you know the front leaf springs were standard and the backs were really wide so I found a way around that and it just happened to work out where I could still use all the same stuff and it yeah it, I think it's gonna work just fine I don't think I need to replace it it actually you know is a little less involved than the uh, the rear setup. So we'll take a look at that. All right, so you can see here what I've done. I basically just swapped the sides for the hanger and the shackle. Um, they are both one-sided and it has an offset uh, smaller, this is that probably a 1.5 mil screw or something that helps capture the leaf on there. Doesn't look that sturdy, but it actually is. And I'm, I'm sitting here messing with it. I can't pull it off. Um, everything works and jobs right. So I just flip the mounts, sticking outward. They're perfectly parallel, fit the axle right, right on, just like it would have the other way. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so save the day because I was about to give up and uh, make a failure video, but it worked out. And I've got the steering servo mount moved back where it looks like it'll line up pretty well with my link and my rod end I've already got, or my servo horn I've already got on there. Um, so yeah. Beautiful transmission and transfer case. I forgot I had that LRT2 on my Blazer that I built a few years ago. And uh, I forgot that's a little involved, taking the transmission apart and putting the, the different shaft in and stuff like that. Um, but it's, it wasn't that bad. I was just having a little unsteady hand day. My hands are shaking, so I was struggling with some of the tiny hardware. But got it all in. That transmission moves nice and smooth. And, uh, yeah. So... What are we going to do with this? Part of the reason why I decided not to run a Hilux or something, the standard wheelbase on it, is because this chassis rail is really long. It's designed to be adjustable. You can, you know, use, use it for custom builds. And you just saw off the back, touch up paint, and go. And uh, it's too it's too pretty to do that. So I'm thinking something long in the in the future here. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've got my uh, 3D printed Apache body from Nightcrawlers 3D. And the... Uh, cab sits on there nice at the right height the right amount of stuff hanging out from underneath it's not too odd looking it didn't ever set well on a trail finder 2 you had too much of the frame exposed 
this works perfect actually because you the bottom of the door is flush with the frame you got a little bit of transfer case and the mount hanging down it looks very realistic and you have just about oh i think you have one screw hole there on the front sticking out past the uh, grill so you could have a nice place to make a bumper or something um, i do have the wheelbase a little too long right now so i, I probably have it in, eh, half inch three quarter inch too far back but i wanted to see what this was like i'm, I'm not set on anything right now i had the blazer down here i have a a, a blazer short bed that i have made a long time ago but uh yeah it's been lowered so all the innards are cut out unfortunately and uh, this looks like it would be the perfect wheelbase to do like a scale monkey extension for a long bed and uh, it would be pretty close and you know we could always adjust it real easy for that but i don't know i don't have a blazer body set up currently at the moment but i do have this and this fits pretty well but i don't i don't even know what direction i want to go with this i have no no real plan here i'm just brainstorming um these axles are pretty much the standard width but we do have those gcm wheels that tuck the tire in a little bit i can't remember how much those were they're, they're like a one seven wheel and they're uh yeah they're made to make it look a little more scale tuck the tires in and it looks like it works well with this body but uh, you can see here the wheelbase is off just a hair I'd give it half an inch but yeah we could probably move the rear suspension up two holes on the frame be perfect still don't have to trim anything off the back it looks like that would be the exact wheelbase we need the frame rails would go all the way to the bed but again another 3d printed bed that i've mocked up slammed with uh, big wheels and stuff and i've cut out all the insides unfortunately um so i don't know what i'm going to do i just wanted this to, out of the box so now i've got it up and rolling where i can look at it and brainstorm and, and get some ideas and you know eventually i'll run across the right body or the right idea a picture of a real car that'll strike me a certain way and uh, we can move forward with that um, one thing part of the reason why i wasn't real upset about stealing these axles off of the trail finder 2 is because the front pumpkin is passenger side oriented and the trail finder 2 transfer case is driver side oriented so the drive shaft was always going the wrong direction and uh the, even this is still a little further this way but the gcm lrt is reversible so you can install it either way depending on what axle you have what you need and uh that was perfect for the these axles that's why i wanted to go ahead and go with them and that's why i didn't realize the front suspension was different <laughs> but we made it work um the, none of the shocks i had worked that was another problem we run into in the rear so here you can see the two sh shock options on the uh, k44 are both on the outside and these are kind of like trail finder 2 but it's lower the chassis is designed to sit lower be more scale and they have, they won't reach they hit the leaf spring or the bottom side of the frame rail even, even if i moved into the furthest mount those shocks wouldn't work um the uh where are they i already put the axles up the bauhaus rc housings have a mount down here on the inboard side of the leaf spring and they recommend using some little shocks off of uh, some little micro crawler thing and they work great for that but they're not going to work for for this so we're gonna have to do some uh brainstorming i've even considered i've got so many uh jalon 2 hoops and uh, stuff like that that we could actually go outboard with the shocks depending on the bed the truck you know whatever we end up making out of this so it's not that big of a deal i also left the front shock mounts off because i don't know again what i'm going to be doing the front shock mounts on this are pretty low profile um i don't think the shocks i have would work they're going to be too long this whole kit was designed for those little micro shocks so i don't know what we're gonna do but we're gonna do something with this thing eventually i don't know if it'll be done and ready by uste i've got a lot of stuff coming up for uh the next two months until we get ready for florida but um i don't know it's a beautiful chassis really nice high quality machine work um yeah so maybe we can make something cool i was looking at another thing um with this long wheelbase setup obviously that rear drive shaft the front one's going to be long enough as it is the rear one's going to be ginormous and i was toying i've got some of these uh this is a uh, semi-truck carrier bearing really nice i think it's lesu lisu that makes that and it was already on this homemade cross member something like that might work to uh 
split the shaft because we've got a center output and a center input on the thing so that being centered on the chassis would work pretty well if the need be but uh yeah that mount won't work for this chassis because there are no holes on the bottom side they're only here on the inside so we'd have to fabricate something else but something to consider if you're looking at making you know a crew cab or a long bed uh, k10 or you know a square body of any kind or whatever long truck you want to make so uh i don't know i've even considered doing some kind of rat rod rock crawler thing but again this chassis is not really this is it, this is gonna be a dollhouse truck this is more scale course so this this might be the truck that i need to build that could haul a gooseneck trailer or something and then that could be something we could get into in the future i've always wanted to do a gooseneck big aluminum welding or not aluminum big steel trailer i can weld and do some some cool fabrication with so uh yeah we might might be a square body in the mix i don't know i've kind of done a lot of those over the years so i'm kind of burnt out with them but it's just burnt out with the kit assembly all the little tedious lights and stuff it's a little stressful on me but i don't know we'll see what we can do i appreciate you guys watching and uh check the link in the video description for the gcm uh the tiny trucks usa the, it's rob <laughs> if you don't know rob he's the guy who's running pretty much uste he also runs the u.s distributor for gcm stuff and uh yeah you can check gcmracing.com also they are always willing to ship all over the world so keep a scale and i'll see you all in the next one